So my job search was um, a whole lot of no's. I didn't give up, I just kept going. Uh, some places I went two and three times and still received the no. They were either the education wasn't there or the experience wasn't there or I was told even by one of the employees the age wasn't right. It was just a no, it was a lot of no's. But I didn't give up, I just kept pushing. Somebody was gonna say yes. From then on, it's just been up, you know? They told me yes when everyone else said no. And it means everything. five children, two boys. Um, they're my oldest, and that's Ray, who's 24, and Andre, who's 12. And my three girls, Sandria, Alexa, and Alia, they are 10, 9, and 7. I was 16 when I had my first child, Ray. I was in school, and um, he was a preemie. So he was born at 24 weeks, and he was two pounds, so he was in the hospital for months. And um, going back and forth, trying to do the school thing and go back and forth to the hospital and be there for him was hard. When I first saw him in the hospital, um, I was afraid. He just looked helpless. He was sick. He had bone infection. It was so many things going wrong, um, not being fully developed. Um, just the care and being young, it was scary. When he was born, it, it just turned everything upside down. I tried to continue on. I eventually didn't go back to school. That was hard, but he needed me, so I did what I had to do. Like, I, I didn't have any control over that, so that's a bad feeling as a parent. You want to be able to give your children the best opportunity in life, and you want it all to go easy for them, but it wasn't going to be easy. He's my strength. His fight, you know, his start was so hard. Everything was hard. Nothing was easy for him. So even though I felt bad, you know, I felt like I had no control, but seeing him smile, knowing that he's deaf, seeing him smile, knowing that he has cerebral palsy, seeing him smile, knowing that he was so different from all the other children that was in, around us, you know, at home. Seeing him smile helped me to keep going, you know? He didn't give up. How could I give up, you know? Some years later, I ended up having more children. I, um, there wasn't a major need for me to work. It was more convenient for me to be home. Um, in the relationship, it was convenient for me to be home. I took care of the children and, and um, did all the homework, you know, schooling stuff, cooking. But eventually, the relationship didn't continue. So with that, it was a need for me to be able to take care of my family. I had to provide, I had to pay the bills. And that was the beginning of uh, a long, <laughs> rocky headache. So I um, began my search 
for a job and it was hard. I didn't have much support at that moment in time. I didn't have the support that I had when I just had Ray. My search continued and um, I just kept getting a whole bunch of no's. So I figured, all right, I'll try to look for night work. So I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and I just kept getting no, 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 no. So it was hard. I've gone everywhere. I tried every position and they were either not hiring because they were already f filled or they weren't hiring because I lacked in something like education or experience. Experience was a major thing because I didn't have that experience or because I wasn't a male or because I, you know, didn't have the education or, you know, it was so different factors that they just looked at me and was like, no. And they didn't give me that chance and I, I get it, you know, but all I needed was a chance. So on my job search, um, I would talk to people along the way and um, I feel like, you know, word of mouth goes far. And um, a few people mentioned Grayston. I remembered after hearing the name that I was at uh, some uh, community event and they had a little setup and um, I received the pamphlet from them and it made me think back that I think I still have it and this was like some time ago but I save everything <laughs> so I um, when I got home I looked for the pamphlet and I read through it and I'm like yeah it's saying it's open hiring and it's, uh... but it was kind of hard to believe you know like could this be real you know, a place that's, you know, willing to give you a chance, anyone, no questions asked. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I decided I'm going to, this is the day I'm going to go down. So I went, I went on down and I walked in the door and I said, I'm here to fill out an application. And um, she told me there is no application. I was like, wait, huh? <laughs> and she's like, no application. It's open hiring. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But no application. She's like, yeah, no application. So she said, just sign your name, leave a contact number. We need to be able to contact you and um, give us some time. And when the opportunity um, comes up, we'll give you a call. Eventually, I was at my lowest point because I didn't have, once again, I didn't have any support. and. Um, turning to social services and my cries for help wasn't really working. Um, I knew that I was gonna eventually have to separate my family, which was a no. I never imagined that I would have to tell my kids that, you know, I'm gonna have to, you know, we're not gonna be together, you know, because I can't provide for you. So that was hard. That was like not even on the list of the last things that I wanted to do or that it just didn't seem like it was acceptable, you know? I mean, who wants to have to have that talk or even make that move? But it was necessary because we couldn't, you know, starve. We can't, you know, I mean, what am I gonna do? So um, one day I just kinda decided on my way to picking my children up that instead of having this talk, let me just see if I can talk to each of their teachers and see if maybe they can find it in their heart to take on my child, you know, whichever teacher, take that child, they have the, you know, they know my child and I have confidence in those teachers, you know, they were great. So I felt good, at least knowing that if I had to separate them, they would be in familiar grounds, you know? So I walked to the school and I'm standing outside and, you know, you see all these families, um, people coming to pick up their kids and it seemed like an ordinary day, um, but it wasn't ordinary for me, you know? It was for everyone else. But for me, it was something different, you know? It was, it was hard. So I'm waiting, the doors are closed, the parents are out. They're looking like they're just waiting for their kids so they can go home and cook and clean and do homework. And I'm looking like I gotta ask these teachers if they can find it in their heart to help take care of my children. waiting and waiting and waiting and um, beautiful day. 
but it just felt like a dark cloud was hanging over my head and um, it was unbearable. How do you fix yourself to ask a teacher something like that? I mean, it just sounded so crazy to me, but it was like the only option that I had other than sending them into the system. The doors are opening up and teachers are coming out, you know, they're letting students and um, my children's classes are still, you know, waiting. And uh, my phone rings. So I answer the phone, it's an unknown number. And I'm like, hello, you know, and they're like, hi, you know, asking for Shauna. And I'm like, this is her speaking. Hi, Shauna, this is Melissa calling from Grayston Bakery. Yes, the reason why I'm calling is a few months back, you put your name on the wait list and uh, your number has come up. Are you still interested in a position here at the bakery? Trying to keep it together because I'm like, oh, you know, I got this on my mind. And, you know, they're like from Grayston and we're wondering if you're still interested in a position here and at night. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yes, so orientation will be held on Thursday. Please be here at 9.30 with two forms of ID. Congratulations, welcome to Grayston. I mean, at this moment in my life when I just felt like dying, you calling me, asking me if I'm still interested. Of course, you know, thank you. So I don't think they really understand how important they are, how that changed my life. They kept my family together. I was able to hold on to what mattered most to me and to make my family happy. When I received that call and the voice on the other end, I felt like I could breathe for the first time in a long time. It was like the skies just cleared. <laughs> it was amazing. I felt strong. I just felt like this is it. This is the beginning. This is what I've been waiting for, and nothing's going to stop me now. All I needed was an opportunity, and that's what they gave me. From then on, it's just been up, you know? They told me yes when everyone else said no, and it means everything. I felt like I had new life. I was able to provide for my family. I didn't have to give them the whole speech. I didn't have to ask the teachers to take them on. I didn't have to go home and cry. You know, I didn't have to deal with my children feeling like they're about to be separated and going through that emotional process. I didn't have to go through all of those things. I didn't have to continue on hearing no. They said yes to me when everyone said no and they saved my family. That's what they did. Here at Grayston, we give an opportunity to individuals from the community, individuals that have come to the state for as a new resident. A lot of our bakers really knock on our doors because they've been through many knocking of doors and they haven't gotten the, the opportunity to become an employee, uh, either because they never worked here at the state or because they have a history of their unable to pass a background check. We have this amazing open hiring model that I can tell you is quite revolutionary. It, coming from a background in corporate America, a traditional setting, a traditional HR where you did interviews, where you had background checks, you had to do resumes, you spend you know, rounds and rounds of time going through interviews and getting a job. This idea of just having someone put their name on a list and when a job becomes available, you automatically getting it is quite remarkable. But what's more remarkable about it is the folks who get the job, and it's the folks who have traditionally been excluded from employment. So, you know, folks dealing with justice involvement, 
uh, the homeless, uh, mental health issues, single mothers, uh, just a whole host of folks, about 10 million actually across this country who have some type of employment barrier. This opens up a world of opportunity for them. My first time on the job, I fell in love and I knew that this was for me. I knew it was what I wanted to do. I was um, given a uniform, um, my hairnet. Um, I was prepared, you know. I would talk with some of the bakers and they would tell me their stories and there's so many different stories. There's so many different people who have just had a change in life because of the opportunity that no one else was willing to give them. I'm not the only one. They will encounter a lot of challenges because they have outside distraction. But through the six months, we will teach them how to do their job on the floor and also provide other training. So if they decide to leave, they have the outside training to know how to become a, an employee. We, our doors are open to individuals who have zero experience. At Grayston, with their open hiring policy, they're willing to help anyone who is willing to try. Uh, so you have people who have just went down the wrong path at a certain point in their life, maybe have gotten arrested, and coming out, you know, the jobs weren't there for them because of it. Grayson gave them that chance to provide for themselves and for their family, to be productive. Before I came to Grayson, I had got released out of prison. I did 12 and a half years, and it's basically the same work that goes on here in Grayson. It was the same work I was doing while I was incarcerated. And I always said to myself, if I can do this while I'm incarcerated, I can come out and become a millionaire. And from that point on, Grayson was a blessing. We're not perfect, and we make mistakes. And, um, you know, after we make our mistake and we, you know, we do whatever it is, time, that we have to do. We just need for someone to say, you know, I see that you've changed, you, you're willing to work, and here's an opportunity. Yo le doy gracias al Señor, ¿verdad? Porque me he encontrado con personas tan lindas acá. Sinceramente, yo me siento como en casa porque ellos me han dado un apoyo cuando, se podría decir, cuando yo más necesitaba. Porque yo tengo un año desde que vine a este país y me encontraba sin trabajo. Y la empresa acá, la Greystone Bakery, ellos me brindaron la oportunidad de mi vida. I've been in Greystone Bakery for five, five years, five and a half years. I learned about Greystone through my sister. I came down here, filled out an application. Six months later, they, that's when they called me and asked me, is I'm ready to go? And um, from that point on, everything was really looking great for me. Bernie's vision was all about how do we restore a community? How do we create a thriving community? And particularly at the time when we were founded in the early 80s, uh, how do we give people hope? At that time in the country, you know, the economy was in dire straits. A lot of people were unemployed, and particularly here in Southwest Yonkers, folks couldn't find jobs because of their past, because of their just involvement, because of the fact that um, they had AIDS and they couldn't get housing. There were so many issues going on at that time that Bernie felt he had to do something. And he saw employment, getting a job as the first step in turning somebody's life around. He was just a quintessential entrepreneur, uh, but someone who had a real heart for people. Uh, we now have a new mission statement, actually, and we say that our whole mission, our whole purpose is to unlock the power of human potential through inclusive employment, one person at a time. What Grayston means to me is hope. Um, it's hope for the folks that we hire. It's hope for the folks that we train here at the foundation. And you know, it's a great feeling to see the transformation happen uh, when you can help someone turn their life around. I'm grateful for being here at Grayston Bakery, starting my lifestyle, moving from the negative to the positive, and moving forward. Bueno, cuando yo comencé a venir aquí, verdad, y cuando yo escucho Grayston, 
dije yo, wow, mi primer, mi primera oportunidad en mi vida en América. Grayston means everything. I'm stable. I, there's no question mark for tomorrow. I know that I have a job. I know that my bills are going to be paid. I know that my children are fed. I know that I can clothe them. And I know that I don't have to worry about someone telling me no because I need employment and I don't have the qualifications to work at their business. So it means everything. It kept my family together and I owe them the world.